In this video, I will explain the reasons why you see not set source and medium in Google Analytics 4. And of course, the solutions. So let's take a look. The first reason is that maybe your Google Analytics 4 event tags sometimes fire before the main Google tag, also known as the configuration tag. For example, here I have an event tag that fires on initialization and then only later on container loaded, the Google tag fires. When you're working with Google Analytics, you need to make sure that the Google tag always fires first before any other Google Analytics 4 event. So in this case, the solution would be to fix the triggers. So the config tag could fire on initialization and then the event tag could fire later, let's say on all pages or maybe on some specific trigger. The next reason applies to those who are using server-side tagging. In Google Tag Manager container, when you have Google Analytics tags installed, in those tags, you must set a parameter called server container URL. And then here you should enter your server site endpoint, let's say something like that. But even though technically Google Analytics event tags should inherit the setting, it is a good practice to have as a safeguard the same parameter used in all other GA4 event tags as well. Because if most of your events are going to your server container, but then some events are sent directly to Google Analytics without the server container URL parameter, then those events might cause the not set issue related to your traffic sources. Also, in this case, it's worth mentioning that maybe you previously had Google Analytics installed directly in the source code of the website. So if you have hard-coded GA tracking codes that send data directly to Google Analytics, while at the same time you have tags sending to the same measurement ID, but those tags are using server-side tagging, this will also cause the not set issue. So you need to make sure that all your Google Analytics tracking codes are sending data to your server-side endpoint if you're using server-side GTM. Then the next several tips are related to measurement protocol. I will not be explaining in great detail what it is, but in a nutshell, it allows your developers to send data directly from their servers to Google Analytics servers. However, there are some rules that they must follow. The idea of measurement protocol is to augment the data that is already collected from the Google tag installed on your website. So when a visitor lands on your website, Google tag loads, it starts a session, maybe some events are tracked, and then measurement protocol can be used to add some additional events to those sessions. Therefore, when you're sending data with measurement protocol, you must include the actual client ID of the visitor who is right now browsing your website, and then a real session ID of that current session. If you're wondering how can you get the session ID, there are mainly two ways. A more convenient but also riskier way would be to read the Google Analytics cookie. So that can be done by going to the developer tools of your browser, then go to application, cookies, find your website domain, and then enter underscore GA. And then here in this particular cookie that contains the measurement ID, we have S and then some number. So this is a session ID. The client ID is available right here. So these two numbers separated with a dot. So to send the request with measurement protocol, your developers would need to fetch these two values and then include them in the request. So session ID should be here, sent as a parameter, and then the client ID should be used right here. I'm using right now the event builder. It's like a mock-up tool that allows you to play around with the requests and send them by using the measurement protocol. But of course, your developers would need to later implement this properly and send the post requests to a particular endpoint. So here are the common mistakes that are done when working with measurement protocol. The developers might come up with their own client ID. So if that happens, then the data will not be processed properly. Another situation is that the developer comes up with a session ID and that session ID is non-existent. This will also not work. To properly send data, the session ID must be of a real user and then the client ID must also be of a real user. 
So if that session is active right now, then this request will be attached to that session, meaning that this event that will be sent, it will be included in that session. And that event will then inherit the traffic source data. But if, for example, client ID is correct, but session ID is incorrect or it's missing, then that event will have no traffic source data, therefore it will be not set. Another common mistake is that session ID is sent not as a numeric value, but as a string, also known as text. So this will also not work. Session ID must be a number. It is also possible to send a request to the past. For example, let's say that the visitor's session happened five hours ago. So the developer can send the session to the past five hours ago by using the timestamp micros parameter. Google Analytics allows us to send the data up to 72 hours to the past. But if the session happened, let's say a week ago, then it will not be possible to send that event to the past. Even if you use an older timestamp, then it will still not work and that event will not be attached to any session. Therefore, you will have the not set. Below this video, I will post a link to a blog post where I share a lot of tips related to not set and not necessarily just to traffic sources. So you should definitely read that blog post as well after watching this video. But the reality is that even if you implement everything correctly that I have described right here, sometimes session start event still might be missing. And that's the next reason why you might be having the not set traffic source data. So session start event is an automatically tracked event that Google Analytics dispatches every time a new session starts. However, for some unknown reasons, sometimes even in perfect setups, the event is missing. And right now it looks like there isn't much that we can do about it. Google kind of tries to sometimes mitigate it or fix this issue. Sometimes that works better, sometimes not so much, but this is just something to keep in mind. If you check your data and you see that, let's say one or 2% of sessions don't have the session start event, I would say it is acceptable level. But of course, if the scale of the missing session start events is higher, then probably something else is wrong. So I think that some of the tips mentioned in this particular video and in this blog post will help you with that. Then the next reason is related to audience triggers. This feature had some potential, but it is causing problems as well. Therefore, I'm not using that anymore. In a nutshell, it works like this. If in Google Analytics Admin, you go to audiences and then you create a particular audience. Let me just do a quick test. For example, those who have tracked a generate lead event or maybe form submission event. So if the visitor enters this audience, meaning that the condition was met, you can also create an audience trigger. This works like this. If you click create new there, then you can add an event name, for example, AU, which stands for audience and then entered form submit audience or something like that. Then Google Analytics will automatically dispatch this event and it will be tracked by your property. So in theory, this looks very good because you can create more complex conditions in the audience. And if the person meets those requirements, then you will get an additional event. The problem here is that these events are often not attached to any session. Therefore, the traffic source of these events is not set. And that's why you might be getting a lot of not set values. So personally, I was using this in the past. I no longer use it or I try to avoid it at all costs. And if you are using it right now, then definitely try to avoid this. If you have a bunch of audiences in the admin panel, you will need to check them one by one. You can do that by clicking three dots next to each audience, then edit. And then if you see an audience trigger and then the event name, then I would recommend removing it right here. So you can delete this. Of course, if you already have this and someone in your company is heavily using it, maybe you should discuss this first before actually deleting it. The next possible reason is UTM parameters. Marketers use them in order to attribute and know the source where the visitors are coming from. Normally when UTM parameters are not in the URL, then Google Analytics will try to attribute that either to direct or maybe to some referral. 
However, if UTM parameters are used incorrectly, maybe their naming convention is not proper, maybe some parameters are missing, then this can cause not set issue in your acquisition reports. Explaining UTM parameters is a quite extensive topic. So if you want to learn that, then I will post a link to a tutorial below the video. Also, if they are not working for you well, then I have another blog post explaining what are the reasons and the solutions. So you can take a look there as well. But for example, one would be that you just have, let's say UTM campaign, and then some value, but you don't have UTM medium and UTM source, which are required. So if this is your case, then it's probably causing you the not set issue. So your next step would be to get familiar with the UTM parameters if you're not yet, and then review your links where you're using these parameters and try to find the root of the cause. Then the other reason is related to the time period that you are looking at. Here I am in the reports section, I opened the traffic acquisition report and I selected the last four days, including today. And here, if I look at the traffic sources, not set takes almost 6% of the traffic. There's also data not available. According to Google, this is related to the data that is not yet processed. But based on what I've seen, some unprocessed data is also in the not set portion right here. So take a look right here, we have last four days, including today, and not set is almost 6%. But if I exclude the today's data and yesterday's data, then the not set will be around 1%, which in my opinion is acceptable. So when you're looking at the data, try to avoid the today's data and yesterday's data. Ideally, you should be looking at the data which is older than 48 hours. Then another possible reason is that maybe you are suffering from some spam bot traffic. If your reports look something like this, where you have sudden spikes, and if you look at those spikes, and most of the data is coming from not set traffic sources, then most likely you are getting some bot traffic. Now, in my opinion, there is no single solution to avoid bots completely, but you could take some measures at least to mitigate it to some extent. The first thing that I always recommend people to do is even before Google Tag Manager or Google Analytics. If the company is not using some content delivery network like Cloudflare, which I highly recommend, then they should definitely do that because usually content delivery networks definitely have some anti-bot features that allow you to block at least some portion of the bot traffic. For example, Cloudflare has a bunch of different security features. Previously, we were able to match the level of protection. Right now, they're doing this automatically. So if you're getting some spikes from certain IP addresses, they might show them CAPTCHA challenges, or maybe they might block them completely. So when the company that is not using content delivery network migrates to it, then there's definitely some improvement in the bot traffic. If you're using server-side tagging and you're hosting it with Stape, then they have also some bot detection feature that adds a particular bot score to each request that you're getting. So you could technically update your triggers in server-side tagging to not fire tags if bot score is over 90, for example, because the score is between one and 100 where 100 means that it's very likely a bot. This can also somewhat mitigate the issue to some extent. And another thing could be that you could ask a developer of the website to check the server logs. Maybe those spikes are coming from particular IP addresses. And I mean, maybe, you know, just several IP addresses cause thousands of requests sent to Google Analytics. If you manage to find those IP addresses, then you could add them to the data filters. So if you go to Google Analytics admin, then data filters, then create a filter, then you can call this whatever, let's say internal traffic, and then you can call this bot traffic. Then you exclude it, you then can change this to bot, for example, and then you set it to active, then click create, activate the filter. And then you should go to data streams, select your website data stream, then configure tax settings, then show more, define internal traffic, and then click create. Here you should enter bots, 
then here it must be the same value that you entered in the filter. And then here you can list the IP addresses. For example, IP address matches regular expression and then list the IP addresses of those bot traffic spikes that you have identified together with a developer. And once you create this rule, this is what will happen. When the request is sent from that particular IP address that you have marked as a bot, Google Analytics will add a traffic type value bot, and then the bot filter will exclude those events from your property. Of course, this is not ideal because this is not a proactive solution, it is reactive. You first get the spike, then together with a developer, you identify the IP addresses, and then you add those IP addresses to this internal traffic rule. Even though it says internal traffic rule, technically you can use this to exclude bots as well. Hopefully you have now mitigated the problem of not set traffic sources in Google Analytics. If you found this video useful, hit the like button. That will help me understand what videos you like and what should I create in the future. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager or GA4, then subscribe to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania and I'll see you in the next video.